Now let's talk a little bit more about space, especially the tilt of the Earth. You see, the Earth rotates around an imaginary line through its center called its axis of rotation. You can see this term here. And we have what looks like a straw that's going through the north and south poles. Of course, that pole is not there. It's not a straw there or anything like that. That just happens to be where you have rotation coming from. And what happens is the earth is rotating that way. And it just rotates around that axis. You can call this an axis. It's kind of like if you were to take a straw and be able to punch it through an orange. I think there's like a TV commercial where it has that. If you were to take a straw and punch it through an orange, you can turn the straw and then be able to turn the orange. Kind of the same thing, even though it's just a basic, it's just the earth that does it itself without a straw. It is turned and it rotates one complete time around every day. The ends of these axes is the north and south pole, and at any given time, half the earth will be in daylight. And you can kind of see that over here. Here we have the sun that is positioned, oh, I guess you could say in the middle of the earth's orbit, and whichever side is facing the sun is the side that gets the sunlight. And you know at half of our day we have sun, the other half of the day we ha don't have sun, but that's not always the case, and you'll see why here in a little bit. Now, I want to have these terms here. A rotation is one time around, one spin. Not spin around the sun, just one spin around. Like the uh, orange example here. Right on this side, just that one complete spin all the way around is 24 hours in one day. It really has nothing to do with the sun except the sun shines on the earth during the rotation. The revolution is the time it takes for the earth to go all the way around the sun. It takes one year to make a revolution. So during the revolution you have 365 rotations. It's spinning, 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 all the way around the sun. And it'll do that 365 times before it makes one complete revolution around the sun. Revolution, of course, is going to be one year, the time it takes to get completely around the sun. Now, we mentioned in an earlier video that gravity is what keeps all space masses in place and the same thing's true here for the sun the for the earth and the sun the reason we have the earth which has not flown out into space is because it is attracted to the sun's gravity gravitational pull it's caught up in it so it is going to orbit around the sun because of gravity i just kind of want to remind you in this one uh in a year in this orbit around the sun, this complete orbit is about 200 million miles. This complete orbit around the sun is about 200 million miles. Now the Earth to the sun, that's about 93 million miles. So you can see this is not to scale here because this 93 million doesn't look like a whole lot compared to the 200 million. But that's about what you have, 93 million miles to the sun 200 million miles around here. Now just for scale you have the moon which is only about 200,000 miles away and that's why the moon looks so big is because it is so close. Well anyway the earth doesn't stand straight up in space it has a distinct tilt. You can see this very well right here it's not standing straight up this is like at an angle if it were completely straight up, the axis of rotation, oh, what a crooked line. Oh, that was awful. But anyway, the axis of rotation would be straight up in space, but it is not straight up in space. It has a tilt, and this tilt is at 23 degrees. Now, I know that's kind of mathematical on you. 
but you have probably studied in math how you can look at the angle of things using a protractor. And for the Earth, scientists think that it is 23 degrees. And they also think that this is something that has varied through time, that sometimes it has been, say, oh, 21 degrees. Uh, sometimes it has been, say, 24 or 25 degrees. And there's a speculation that that may have something to do with why we've had ice ages and so on. But that tilt is going to play a huge role in the seasons. Now, before we get to the seasons, let me tell you that this tilt stays the same the whole time. Now, I know it's pointed in this direction on this picture, and it's pointed in the opposite direction on this picture, but that's not the case. This is just a matter of perspective. If you were to be looking at the Earth from this side in space, then you would have this same direction going up through here. So don't, don't, don't worry about that. But if you notice, as it does go through space in its revolution around the sun, it is always pointing in the same direction. The earth does not wobble, which means as it's going around, it, the tilt doesn't go back and forth and back and forth. It just stays in that same particular area, pointing in that same particular way the whole time. You can see that right here. You can see it's going around the sun, and it still points in the same direction the whole time. And actually, you may remember last video, we talked about how it's pointing at Polaris, the North Star. So that would kind of make sense that it would not wobble because it's always pointing the same star. So what's going to happen is this is going to cause the seasons. It's going to cause the seasons. Now, what that means is, oh gosh, I'm just drawing awful today. Anyway, here we have the sun, which is nowhere near scale, but you can see the earth a lot better this way. Oh, let's take the summer here. Here in the summer, the earth is the earth is getting sunlight from the sun, but it seems to be that the northern hemisphere is getting more tilt toward it, so it's getting more sun. And in fact, whenever you have that northern hemisphere getting more sun, it will be... I'm sorry, it will be from this zero degrees here to this 45, my bad, to this zero degrees here where the sunlight is, which shows you that this entire area up in here, the Arctic Circle, for that little bit of time, they're going to get sun the entire day. They're going to get sun the entire day. And the highest concentration of sun will be like from this line to this line in which the United States is part of it. So the United States will end up having summer when it's tilted toward the sun. Now as it spins and rotates and rotates and rotates, three months later, you have it to where it's pretty much equal. You have an equal amount of sun going from North Pole to South Pole. See, it would have changed by then because you get North Pole and South Pole right at the tip of the sun shining and then by the time you get all the way over here to winter whenever it's winter notice that it is tilted the earth is tilted to where the southern hemisphere gets a little bit more of the gets a little bit more of the sun so that's why we have a winter time because we are tilted away from the sun and we have a summer time because we are tilted toward the sun and then of course every three months it, ch it changes to a spring, then fall, or spring, and then summer, and then winter, and then so on. So we have what's called terms here called equinox and solstices. An equinox, uh, whenever you think of the word equinox, think of the word equal, because what's happening is the northern and southern hemispheres are getting an equal amount of sun. You're getting an equal amount of sun. The tilt doesn't really make as much difference there. Now, it, whenever you have a solstice, that's when you have the extreme. The area of sunlight is at its maximum in either the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Like in this case. This case right here has to be at one of the solstices. You're getting the maximum amount of daylight, and this would be the summer solstice for us. The summer solstice, you're getting the maximum amount of daylight there. Back to here. 
and uh, our summer solstice would be here when North America is getting the maximum amount of daylight. And you can see when these happen. These happen like the 20th, the 21st, and the 22nd, and even the 23rd as far as these uh, particular times of the year. Let me give you some tilt facts. Let me give you some tilt facts. At the summer solstice, areas in the Arctic Circle are completely dark for 24 hours straight. So summer solstice no my bad uh, I said that wrong. At the summer solstice you have areas in the Arctic Circle that are in complete daylight for 24 hours a day which means at the South Pole you have complete darkness for 24 hours a day in the Antarctic Circle because another tilt fact because of the tilt the sun in the winter at noon doesn't go very high on the horizon now look at this here you have the sun on December 21st notice that it is not very high on the horizon it's fairly low angle at the horizon but notice what you have here on June 21st that's when you have the summer solstice it is way up top and you can kind of see how that would happen. Say it's the summer solstice here. You're seeing the sun directly. It's directly over top nearly. But what if you're right here? If you're standing right here in the United States, you have more of an angle in which you are seeing the sun. So the sun is actually lower in the sky during our winter than it is during the summer. And that's going to be exactly opposite in the southern hemisphere. Say in Australia, it would be exactly opposite. Uh, that's another reason why the summer is, war is warmer and the winter is cooler. Because the sun is not going to spend much time up high in the sky in the winter. Now when you're at the equator, the sun is almost always high in the sky at noon. And the closer you get to the poles, the farther down the, toward the horizon the sun will be. So if you're near the North Pole, the sun would be farther down here. But if you're near the equator, the sun would be farther up here in the wintertime. Another tilt fact. Also, the farther away from the equator, the longer the summer days are and the shorter the winter days are. Now think about here. Here in the summertime, the sun sets, oh, about 9 o'clock. But right now, I'm making this video in March, it doesn't set around 9 o'clock. It sets mm, 7 something, maybe even into 8. But back in the winter time, back in December, the sun set about 5 or 6 o'clock. I'm sure you noticed that. At the equator, the days in the summer are exactly 12 hours long. So the closer to the equator you get, the closer the days will be to 12 hours per day. Uh, the farther up you get, the more extremes you have. Up here in northern Canada, you will have the sun. You will have summertime in which you have a lot of daylight, and wintertime in which it gets dark really quickly, where you don't have as much daylight. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about the tilt and the seasons.